Do you want to buy an electric vehicle in 2023, but you're unsure about how the tax credit is going to benefit you? If at all, the IRS is actually being our friend and giving us a tool to check out not only the basic requirements of the EV tax credit eligibility, but also each manufacturer and model that will qualify for this tax credit. And this also includes certain plug-in hybrids as well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kirk. Of course, this is Kirky Cars, where I talk about electrified vehicles. Make sure you're subscribed because I love talking about industry auto news. And if you're into that, make sure you stick around. So let's get into this. This is all beginning January 1st, 2023 or later. I didn't want to go too much into what the IRS has to say about how vehicles qualify. Just because a vehicle qualifies doesn't mean you qualify for it. You have to make less than 150000 if you're a head of household, less than 225000 If you are married or a joint household, you cannot make over three hundred thousand dollars now this is also confusing because certain vehicles apply as a sedan and certain trim levels of that same vehicle could be designated as an suv all new electrified vehicles to qualify have to be assembled in north america now it gets much trickier as time goes on because battery components have to be sourced by north american companies and in 2023, the components have to be over 50%. Does the vehicle meet the percentage of requirements for critical minerals? And these have to come from either the United States, North American countries, or a US free trade agreement country. And as time goes on, just like the battery components, the greater the percentage of minerals and components have to be. Let's get into Audi. And even though Audi has a bunch of e-tron vehicles, they don't qualify. They are not built in North America. So the Q5 TFSI e Quattro plug-in hybrid, $80,000 is the limit for it. Going to its competitor BMW, two plug-in hybrids, even though the IM and the i4 and now the i7 for 2023, the fully battery electric vehicles, only their plug-in hybrids qualify. Ford has the escape plug-in hybrid, so that qualifies. That's kind of a nice like leg up over, let's say, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, as well as the RAV4 Prime. Uh, the Ford e-transit, of course, uh, is a van, so that is the $80,000. F-150 Lightning is a truck, $80,000 is the cap. Mustang Mach-E, $55,000. So the Mustang Mach-E is a crossover, but it's not considered an SUV, so it doesn't get the eighty grand cap. Aviator plug-in hybrid gets the $80,000 cap, but the Corsair, another crossover, $55,000 cap. Let's go to General Motors, and this includes all of their brands. The Chevy Bolt qualifies, and that is already like the cheapest electric vehicle on the list. Chevy has just recently increased the price, but not that much due to it now being qualified for the $7,500 tax credit. Chevy Bolt EUV also qualifying for that tax credit. And Cadillac Lyric is only qualifying for the $55,000 tax credit, not the $80,000 tax credit. And General Motors is trying desperately to get this Cadillac Lyric to qualify because none of them essentially are $55,000 anymore. They all cost more than that. All right. Hyundai, no Hyundais, even though they have the Ionic 5, they're coming out with the Ionic 6 this year, the Streamliner sedan, no Hyundai vehicles are considered eligible. And they also have plug-in hybrids as well. Anyways, Jaguar, none. Kia, no surprise because their parent company Hyundai doesn't qualify either. Mazda, they only have the MX-30. That does not qualify. Mercedes-Benz does not qualify either. Built, or at least their EVs are built elsewhere in uh, Europe. Mitsubishi, of course, the, their plug-in hybrid. The Outlander is built in Japan. Nissan, Okay, well, they uh, they have a bunch of Leafs. Rivian, well, their trucks qualify $80,000, but I believe they're getting pretty expensive. Looks like base price is $73,000, so most of them probably won't qualify. Stellantis, plug-in hybrid Chrysler Pacifica. It's a minivan. That vehicle starts at $50,000, but now you'll be able to get that $7,500 tax credit, which makes it, it helps softens the gut punch when you drop 50 to 60K on a minivan. All right, Jeep Wrangler 4XE gets the $80,000 limit. Not quite sure why. This gets the $80,000 cap instead of like the Lyric getting the $55,000 cap. The Cherokee 4xE or 4XE, whatever you want to call it, also $80,000 cap. Subaru, the Solterra doesn't qualify, built in Japan. Tesla, so they do have a lot of models here that are 
available for the tax credit. But look how confusing this is. Looks like every three row Model Y qualifies for the $80,000 limit, but the two row Model Ys only qualify for the $55,000 limit for an SUV or for a sedan, I should say, when the $80,000 is considered an SUV at that point. Are manufacturers going to start stuffing third rows into these vehicles so they can qualify? for a, a, the tax credits. Tesla Model 3s, of course, are the sedans, $55,000 cap. Toyota, they have plug-in hybrids with throughout the Toyota and Lexus lineup. They also have, well, the BZ4X, uh, and of course, they're all built in Japan. None of them qualify. So it won't be until 2025, probably for Toyota and Hyundai at that point when they start building their uh, plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles in North America. So it's gonna be a long time for them more than likely, unless these rules change, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Volkswagen, hello, ID4, and they also just debuted the ID7. Don't know if that ID7 sedan hatchback liftback thing is going to be produced in America. I would assume so. But the ID4, the all wheel drive models qualify for the $80,000 tax credit, and the two wheel drive versions are capped at $55,000. So look how confusing this can be for a buyer. And the S60 for 2022 does. The plug in hybrid is built in South Carolina and it does qualify. But for 2023, like, Good luck finding a base model S60 T8 recharge with 450 some horsepower. I love this car, reviewed it, but it's not like, it's kind of like a unicorn because finding one at 55K or under is gonna be tough. But if you can, then it gets 7,500 bucks cheaper. So this game is really ridiculous. These cutoffs are ridiculous. I understand the income to an extent. It's so messy that I wish that there was no tax credits for electric vehicles. If they're superior, which the government wants you to think they are, and they are superior in different ways, but not in every single way than gasoline vehicles. But if they're superior, the market would automatically shift to a superior product. And tax credits shouldn't have to be a part of this buying process for people buying an electric vehicle. But that's just the way it is that the governments want around the world. So we all have to play the game and I'm going to end it there. If you enjoyed today's video of the breakdown of vehicles here in North America that qualify, make sure to smash a like button. Make sure to subscribe for upcoming industry auto news pertaining to electric vehicles. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day.